Hi, this is Manos Berlakis, and this is case 151 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a patient with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction who had a downward spiral course. The patient had diabetes and presented with chest pain. EKG showed marked elevation of the ST segments in the inferior as well as the lateral leads with reciprocal ST segment depressions. He was taken emergently to the cath lab, and actually he was hypotensive and on arrival with a systolic blood pressure in the 80s and marked ST segment elevation. This is the initial angiogram from right radial axis. The patient does have multivessel coronary artery disease. There is thrombotic occlusion of a second obtuse marginal branch. There is also thrombus in the distal circumflex. There is a lesion in the more proximal circumflex, probably a CTO in a first OM. And there is also significant disease in a ramus branch. There is diffuse disease into the LAD. And there is a high-grade lesion in a diagonal that also appeared to be chronic whereas the right coronary artery only had moderate disease. So the culprit seemed to be the circumflex thrombotic occlusion and the second obtuse marginal thrombotic occlusion. However, during the angiogram, the patient started getting more hypotensive, and then he actually had cardiac arrest. He had cardiac compressions, a code was called. The patient uh, was emergently intubated, and then uh, we gave him a lot of epinephrine, eventually pulse came up, and the plan was to initially initiate VA ECMO. However, it took a while for the ECMO team to come, and alternatively, we inserted an impeller device, and the patient, as we mentioned, was intubated. After doing that, the hemodynamics improved, and then with um, additional doses of vasopressors, there was a significant increase in the blood pressure, but eventually he stabilized. He actually developed atrial fibrillation requiring DC cardioversion. So what to do? The culprit, again, seemed to be the second obtuse marginal and distal circumflex. We had some difficulty wiring, but we were able to advance a guide wiring to both vessels using a polymer jacket, soft tip, non-tapered Sion black wire. And then did balloon dilatation, which actually restored flow in the second obtuse marginal, which was actually a fairly, fairly large branch. This is from uh, the cranial view, showing a thrombus in the proximal segment of the second obtuse marginal, um, as well as some disease um, in the uh, proximal circumflex. We decided to stand using the provisional approach, so we placed a 2.5 by 30 millimeter onyx frontier stand going all the way from the second obtuse marginal to the mid circumflex, jailing the circumflex. We were concerned a little bit about the potential for occlusion of the circumflex, but given the patient's poor hemodynamics and emergency situation, we decided to proceed with an attempt for provisional standing. The stand was deployed, and as we feared, unfortunately, we did lose the side branch. But we did have a guide wire into the side branch indicating the location into the vessel. So this is a case of a provisional in which uh, we have the side branch that becomes occluded after standing the main vessel. The next step is to rewire the side branch, and if we can, the next step is to perform a balloon inflation, and if that is good, then we're done. But if balloon is insufficient for getting a good result, then the side branch may need to be standed, either using the tap technique or using a reverse crash or culotte technique. So in this particular case, we were actually able to rewire with another Sion Black guide wire using the original wire as a marker of the location of the distal circumflex. And then after doing balloon angioplasty, there is TIMI1 flow. But unfortunately, there's still significant disease and maybe some thrombus into the distal circumflex as well. So we decided to stand. And in this case, the angulation was actually favorable. It was close to 90 degrees. So we thought we could get a nice result with a tap, T and protrusion technique with minimal protrusion into the main vessel. So this is a 2.25 by 15 millimeter onyx frontier stand. And uh, there was a 3.0 millimeter balloon into the stand the circumflex stand was deployed, and then we um, adjusted the balloons and did uh, a kissing balloon inflation after pulling back the circumflex balloon a little bit. 
and this is the Kissing Balloon Inflation. And we did have a nice result after this with good flow in both the obtuse marginal as well as the circumflex. The patient did have some episodes of hypotension despite impella and vasopressors during the case, but the STs are remarkably better. We did an intravascular ultrasound that uh, demonstrated good expansion of the stem into the circumflex, but there was a more proximal lesion. Um, we did a repeat kissing inflation with a 3.5 millimeter balloon into the uh, obtuse marginal and the 2.0 into the circumflex. And then uh, we stended the proximal circumflex with another drug eluting stent. And this uh, provided uh, a nice result with Timothy flow and good patient hemodynamics. Actually, the impella was turned down to P3 at the end of the procedure and uh, significant improvement, but not complete resolution of the ST segment elevation. This was the final result. Again, good flow in both the OM, second OM, as well as the circumflex. Based on the culprit shock, we decided to not treat any other lesions during the time of the presentation, and the patient was discharged to the intensive care unit. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that in patients with cardiogenic shock, especially if they have cardiac arrest, as was the case in our patient, Hemodynamic stabilization is critical before proceeding with percutaneous coronary intervention. In patients with arrest, we typically go on VA ECMO, but VA ECMO requires mobilization of the perfusion team that can take 15-20 minutes. In our case, we were able to place an impeller CB device, and with this and uh, vasopressors and inotropes, we were able to stabilize the patient. We then proceeded with um, doing percutaneous coronary intervention. This was a bifurcation lesion of the second obtuse marginal and distal circumflex. We tried the provisional approach, but unfortunately that resulted in occlusion of the distal circumflex. And the solution in this case was the tap, T and protrusion. That was a favorable angle close to 90 degrees. And actually this technique provided a nice result with a, a kissing balloon inflation at the end. Last but not least, the importance of the team approach is hard to underestimate. In this case, a big part of the success of the case was the help of advanced heart failure, the intensivists who were in the cath lab with us managing the patient and stabilizing him, offering advice for performing cardioversion and helping stabilize the patient and allow us to do the PCI with a good clinical and angiographic outcome. Thank you.